Hi, welcome to the part 11. So the previous two, three parts are in the members area. Become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member. Okay. You can join and become that member for a very small premium and gain access to those questions. If you have not yet subscribed, do so. This channel will help you with cloud certifications, Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. So this is the next one. So company is running its SAP workload on AWS. So they are already on AWS. The company's security team has implemented following comments. So that means they have put all EC2 instances for SAP uh, must be SAP certified instance instance types. That means SAP itself would certify that this is good for performance, good for reliability, compatibility and support. So that is one. Encryption must be enabled for all S3 buckets and EBS and then cloud trail must be activated. What is cloud trail? If you want to understand what activities are happening in the account or each each and every activity, it is captured by cloud trail. You can see event history, you can see cloud trail lake and etc. So system parameters must be compliant with business rules, detail monitoring should be enabled on all. So that means this cloud trail guy should be monitoring each and every instance, all activities. The company wants to develop automated process to review the systems for compliance. The process must provide notifications. So that means any any deviants, they should get an email or some, some sort of notification that, hey guys, this is getting fucked up. Okay. So when we look at these options, trusted advisor seems off. See advisor what it does. It only gives advice. Advice about what? Cost optimization, improving performance and security gaps. It will only give advice. Whether you want to do it or not, it is up to you. So this getting, uh, you know, when you know that some problem is happening, getting emails and etc. This guy will, this guy is just a consultant. I'll give you advice. If you want to do it or not, it's up to you. So we don't want just consultants. We, we want someone to whip our ass so that we are forced to take some action. See app config, this is primarily used uh, for applications. That, production environments without a full code deployment. See, primarily whenever we want to uh, automate the software release, improve the frequency, improve application resiliency, and address emergent issues quickly, then we have to use app config. Primarily it is used with websites, web applications, and etc. Here we are not dealing with web applications. We are dealing with SAP applications. So this is, no. So now see, we have to use something with, with makes use of AWS config tool because it will help you with your assessment audit. Audit is something which your question is asking and this will help you with evaluation of the configuration resources. Now options B and D both are telling the same things. They are making use of config, but what is B doing? It is telling I'll, I'll use uh, config managed rules to monitor the compliance. Okay, that is, uh, that, that is fine. And then it is saying I will uh, use event bridge and SNS for email notification. Okay. But option D, D is saying, boss, I will use config managed rules to monitor compliance with the requirements, except, except, except the SAP, SAP system parameters. You know, for SAP system parameters, see, SAP is a special thing. SAP is a special thing. You cannot club it with the, you cannot give it the same treatment you give to other parameters. So for SAP system parameters, you have to use custom rules because AWS directly does not cover that. AWS KPIs, whatever metrics are there, it will not directly cover it. So you have to create custom rules. Okay, B is saying I will I will just use managed rules to monitor. So no boss, you cannot do SAP monitoring just because of uh, just using standard rules. You have to create some custom rules. So this is where you have config custom rules that you will create for for whom for whom for whom for SAP system parameters. And then it is the same. You want to use event print. So if you're making use of event driven applications, you want some sort of alerts and etc. You can use this and then you have to uh, have to send automated alerts for alerts. You will use emails. You can send emails, push notifications, anything. So that is done through SNS. So here you use fully managed pop up service. This is SNS what is doing for A to A and A to P messaging. So this works perfectly because we have to send alerts. We will do it. And when we have to send alerts, when? The resource flag is tagged as non-compliant. If it is already compliant, we will not have to burden the uh, email system and disturb the uh, the monitoring team by sending alerts that hey, you know, we are still compliant, we are still compliant, we are still compliant. No, only when the non-compliance occur, that time you send an email. That time the email will also have gravity. So here we have option D. Option D is our final answer. Here we are going to uh, take care of monitoring of uh, the all the requirements plus the SAP system parameters will have special treatment. Okay, the next one, a company is hosting SAP workloads on AWS. The, so they are already on AWS. The SAP solution architecture is designing high availability architecture. For what? For HANA. Okay, they, they have HANA workloads. They are doing it for HANA workloads. 
both SAP S as well as SAP BW HANA workloads both. Now they have the following requirements. Now there are uh, the following requirements. First is redundant SAP application servers that consists of primary and additional application servers. So, so there should be redundancy. ASCS and ERS instances that you that use failover cluster database high availability with primary database instance and secondary db instance so here also we need uh, you know, some kind of duplication or redundancy how should the sap solution architecture design the architecture see what is acs ascs application server central services and what is ers it is nqdq replication server so the primary focus of such kind of uh, you know when we include acs and ers why we are we including because we want some kind of duplication that means high availability and failover so if the application should not have any downtime if something gets screwed up the other guy can still do the job so one thing is very important see if you want acs acs fails and you want the failover to happen so they both should be in different subnets that is what this guy is doing in different subnets across two ACs. one guy is on one of the one AC. so so you have acs here and you have ers cluster here so if this gets gets screwed up this is still active okay so this is what helps you uh now we can straight away you know using this we can straight away cancel two options a because a is saying i i will put them within the same az and b is also saying i will put them in the same AZ. so these two guys are wrong uh, we have to put in two different AZs. okay now c and d are similar c and d are similar what to do let let us read the other lines See, C and D are similar in other lines also. See, if you see uh, deploying the pass instance and as, uh, this instance, they also they are putting in two different ACs. They are putting in two different ACs and primary and secondary DB instance. This also different subnet across two ACs, different subnets across two ACs. Still here it is similar. Only the last line is different. So last line C is saying I will deploy all the components in the same VPC and uh, D is saying no boss. I will not deploy all components in the same VPC. I will put uh, some components in one VPC the other components in other VPC, like some components for ASCS instance in one VPC, this is one VPC, the other one in other VPC. So usually we put them in the same VPC. It does not, I mean, here we don't need bifurcation. Why? Because we want to simplify the network configurations and we want to centralize the management. Whatever stuff we are doing, we want to centralize that. See, we are, uh, now you will say how will failover happen? if one guy gets screwed up see we are already doing deployment in two az's so if one az goes down other az is up so we don't have to do this kind of stuff with the vpc also we can put the, all of them in the same vpc okay so we got our final answer option c is our final answer okay why because each and everything for ascs and ers cluster we are doing multi az deployment like two az's we are using different subnets also the network is also separate different subnets different subnets different ACs. okay and all components we are putting in the same vpc vpc is safe but if you have not yet subscribed do so it will help you with such certifications the previous two or three parts we have put in the cloud kernel and a cloud ninja members area become a member anyways you are spending a hell lot of money in unwanted things this will help you core with cloud certifications you will pass the exam okay if you clear these concepts you will pass the exam if you don't clear the concepts there is no use you will fail the exam okay so whatever we are explaining in these videos the concept is important so i hope uh, you understood the concepts explained in this part this is the end of part 11 this channel is dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications aws cloud azure cloud google cloud see you in the next part